I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're speaking with author S.M. Chung, author of It's My Choice, a powerful and transformative journey through doubt, fear, pain, and joy. This deeply personal account of self-healing transcends gender, race, and wealth, as the author explores the profound impact of choice and free will on their path to self-discovery. We are delighted to have S.M. Chung join us today on Spotlight. We thank the folks at Good River Print and Media for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel. So good to see you today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Tell me what it was like for you writing this book. Well, it wasn't difficult because I had all these thoughts and ideas. After my out-of-body experience, I did an extremely lot, well, a great deal of thought. And I had many questions that I had since childhood. And what I did was actually embark on a journey to find some answers, mm -hmm. which I never really thought about before. Then I just, then I remember what I had learned from my son when he was in Catholic uh, grade school. He was talking about free will. That day he learned that we can do anything we want. And when I remembered that, I thought, you know, that's right, but we don't think about those things. We don't tell ourselves we can do anything we want. Usually we have questions and we have questions of self-doubt. So it's really important for people to stop, like they say, stop and smell the roses. You know, think about what you're doing on a daily life. And you'd be surprised what you find out. Yeah. And it's very empowering once you believe that you can do anything, that you do have free will, that you have control. Yes, that's very, very true. And it's very... Um, it gives you greater confidence on who you are and what you can do. Great, great. Who did you write the book for? Is it for people who are going through hard times? Is it people who are just living their lives and will come across, you know, um, barriers and obstacles uh, in their lifetimes? Actually, it's for all because everyone has problems, no matter how happy they appear. We each have problems. We just have to sometimes stop and think about what we're doing with our lives. Mm. And in doing so, you always discover something that you can improve in your life. So Absolutely. you always do that. Absolutely. In what ways do the choices we make during our lifetime contribute to our mental, physical, and spiritual healing, would you say? I would say in many ways and in all ways, because, and, you know, people react differently to our decisions. But we need to think about what we're doing to ourselves, because actually, if we end up with a problem and we think we have a problem, it's really our choice that brought us to that point. And that's the reason for the title. Because through life, we make a lot of choices. We don't stop and think about what we do. But here I am today. And it is through the choices I made that brought me to this point. Exactly. What would be your best advice for someone who is struggling on their journey towards spiritual healing? Take time out. I always recommend to my friends, meditate. I do that daily, even for 15 minutes. You have to rest your mind. You cannot allow your mind go willy-nilly through life. Stop and think of what you're doing. I mean, really think about what you're doing. Then you will begin to get answers that you like, and you actually act on that those answers. Then you will have better direction in your life. You know, we, we talked before, you said you lived in Hawaii, which of course is a beautiful place. 
Does living in a beautiful place filled with natural beauty help you on your spiritual journey? Well, you know, a lot of the, I lived in on the mainland for 20 years mm -hmm. prior to coming back to Hawaii. I was born and raised and educated in Hawaii, but um, for about 20 years, I lived like in various states because my husband was in the military. So we traveled a lot. And when I talk to young people like locally here, I always recommend to them, go out, go live in different places, find out what people are like, find out what places are like, and you will learn because you will always learn something daily. Everybody teaches you, just listen carefully to what people are saying because sometimes they find solutions and those are the solutions that will help you become a better person because the, the reason I did this is I wanted to become a better person. Okay, how do you do that? Well, you stop and think of what you're doing. And there are some things that you, you know that they're not better things to do. You can do better than that. So it begins by thinking about what you're doing and by acting out on what you can do. Because the solutions are within you. You don't say the answer is out there. The answer is within you. And you, you become very self-reliant. And in becoming self-reliant, and you do things, and you find success in it, it builds your confidence. And it maintains, a, you maintain your inner strength. In fact, you build your inner strength. So you can actually take care of any problem that comes along. What do you attribute your philosophy on life to Eastern philosophy, the concept of having chi and so forth, inner power? Yes, because I believe in energy. Everything is full of energy. I wanted to learn a little bit about physics because I d didn't have enough room in my curriculum to take physics. So I bought a book and I started reading it. And the first chapter it said was, energy is never destroyed. And it used the word never. It is merely transformed. And I thought, wow, that is powerful. That's awesome. Yeah. You don't think about those things. So then, you know, by myself, I think about things. Well, yeah, you think of different situations and conditions. Energy isn't destroyed. It is transformed. It's transformed to another kind of energy. Right. And that's like life itself, is that it's never that's, really destroyed. It just takes on a new dimension. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. why when the Bible started talking about immortality, I'm thinking, we immortality, what does that mean? Yeah. Does it mean we die? No. I found out that you don't die. Your soul is transformed into spirit. Tell us and, a little bit about your, your experience with the uh, out-of-body experiences. That's right. And I always wanted to know as a kid, you know, what's it like to die? And besides, why are we born if we have to die later? Why, why do we have to go through this? And so, you know, then you learn about karma. You learn about the bad things you do and what happens when you keep on doing bad things because bad things will happen to you because you created that kind of life for yourself and you blame other people for all the bad things happening to you. No, it's not their responsibility. It's your responsibility. You are responsible for your life, every bit of it. And Hence the so, title. It's your, it's your choice. It's my choice, right? Yes. Yeah. So when it comes to fruition, it's actually a, a point of self-realization yeah. of what you are, who you are, 
then you know what you want to do. And you think carefully before you do anything, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's an amazing book. It is called My Choice. It is a powerful and transformative journey through doubt, fear, pain, and yes, joy as well. It is written by S.M. Chung. It is a delightful book. It is a lyrical book, and it is highly recommended. Sue, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Logan. I appreciate it. The pleasure Bye. is all mine. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, on Spotlight.